Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is F1 Fanatics. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another weekly news show here on F1 Fanatics. This is where we round up all the latest news in F1 over the uh, course of the last week. And yeah, we keep you guys up to date. Don't forget if you are new around here, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification and you can keep up to date with all our latest content and get more videos just like this. Um, it's been a good week in the news. We will talk about the one man well career news at the end because obviously this is that, that's probably the highlight for me and uh, the best news. So I want to kind of end this news roundup on a high. But we're going to start off with the news that came out yesterday. They released in a public release uh, Spanish team uh, Campos. Uh, Racing, who obviously uh, a manufacturer who work in Formula 2 and Formula 3. Um, I think it surprised people that uh, out of all the kind of F2, F3 people, it was Campos making a push to step up to F1. Um, but yes, they were saying that they are inquiring. They've made lots of kind of um, links, talks with people within Formula 1 um, about the possibility of uh, stepping into the sport in 2021, depending as all these things are on the 2021 rules and regulations and how that might play out. So they were excited, they released an official statement with that. I think it was touted that maybe Pascal Verline and Alex Palau might race for them, but obviously... Um, it would be far too early to come up with a driver lineup there. Um, but yeah, that was pretty exciting. I think people got generally pretty excited about having a new team in Formula 1. Obviously, Pantera was noted a couple of weeks back. But then the FIA came out with an official statement and they basically shut this down, saying they're not really interested in teams coming in in 2021. Um, they want to stabilise the new rules with the 10 teams that they currently have and have 10 healthy teams in F1 that they currently have. And maybe after that, if those new teams can bring something to Formula 1 and add to the product, because... They said in recent times, obviously, the new teams that have been and gone, you kind of look at kind of the Manor Racings, the Catrum Racings, uh, Mauritia Racing, who have kind of been and gone through there. Um, so they want someone who's really going to add to the product of Formula One, which uh, I suppose is fair enough. We all want someone to be competitive, not just cars on the field for the sake of it and being bat markers like, unfortunately, Williams have been. Um, this season but yeah I um, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on that one guys uh, moving on to uh, the main bulk of the news which uh, revolves around McLaren really um, after we did the weekly news last week it was rumoured that uh, McLaren and Mercedes were going to be joining forces again in 2021 and then on the Saturday it was confirmed I actually think the BBC confirmed it the night before but yes uh, secrets like Zach Brown said don't stay hidden for long within the world of Formula 1 but yes it will be the first time that they have worked together since 2014 and Zach Brown was saying that um Mercedes are obviously being the benchmark in the hybrid era and they want to have the best engine in their car and obviously everything that they've kind of been producing in Formula 1 in terms of working towards getting back to the top if they have the best engine consistently on the grid uh, in this era then obviously it's down to them to improve their aero package so there's no hiding spaces uh, for them out there and they can hopefully uh, make greater strides to getting back up to the top of the field. Um, they also, part of the reason for this deal was uh, it's just a clean, um, it's a clean engine deal between just a supplier. It is nothing more. It's not Mercedes withdrawing from the sport and having a link to McLaren like they did obviously in the uh, 90s and 2000s um, it is not uh, them sharing any technology any parts it is just a clean deal uh, McLaren will pay the money and Mercedes will provide the engine and both sides were quite keen to stress this and that leads into the other link of this where obviously uh, Renault um, who are currently McLaren's engine suppliers and they will be for 2020 before the change rules in 2021 um, yeah 
Renault wanted a more complicated deal that they proposed. Um, they wanted to kind of share parts with each other, kind of, uh, I think, shared gearbox was kind of muted there because they were saying they're the two teams below. And I kind of Cyril is quite keen to kind of emphasise that McLaren and Renault are on exactly the same level. He uh, doesn't see Renault being behind McLaren at all, which um, uh, the constructors may suggest differently obviously Renault engine wise they're on exactly the same field but McLaren certainly have a better aero package and are more competitive at more circuits than what Renault have been this year um, but yeah they wanted to complicate the deal and McLaren weren't interested in this at all and they said uh, so that probably seat them to go and uh, look at Mercedes and see if they could get that deal and Renault have been left uh, with not providing obviously they not uh, reliant on this anymore but in linking back to the Campos racing coming in I wouldn't be surprised if a new team comes in that Renault would be backing them because obviously they have a strong junior program now and they've invested a lot of money in there and have quite a good roster of drivers on that junior program and um, they are certainly needing probably a junior team like a Ferrari and like a Mercedes um, to put them somewhere and like a Red Bull obviously as well so um, yeah they will certainly be I think heavily involved in any new team coming into the sport and supporting them with an engine and also in return asking for at least one seat for one of their junior drivers to get a step into the sport um, it seems going back to McLaren that Lando Norris has become part of the Mercedes fold kind of drivers managed by them part of the deal this was kind of I think I've seen it on planet F1 was a deal there I'm not sure if this is entirely confirmed but it it looked legit so that is very interesting which would then make Lando Norris and George Russell both on the um, having lost Esteban Ocon they would be both very good drivers to have on um, the Mercedes roster and then yeah it would be interesting in a straight fight for that Mercedes seat you'd have to say if this is true that Lando Norris would jump ahead of George Russell in the pecking order because he's been in a more competitive car than Russell and so therefore um, and if McLaren are driving with Mercedes engines and Lewis just keeps going for the next two three years uh, yeah, Lando Norris would probably be primed to take that seat. So, yeah, interesting times ahead on that one. I say watch that space. It'd be interesting to see. On to the next point of topic, and that is relation to the 22 race calendar next year and the consequences that that will put on the teams. Um, Max Verstappen has had his say on things, and he uh, says that it's going to cause divorces and um, this isn't in relation to talking about him and the driver's side of things because that's kind of expected they have their um, short career relatively short careers within the sport but I think you relatively know uh, what you're getting into there I think it's all the engineers and the backroom staff that are going to spend the majority of the year probably up to 10 months of the year away from their home um, supporting the F1 calendar and yeah that is going to put a hell of a lot of strain on their personal relationship so i think next year will be a real trial year to see whether 22 is something um feasible uh for kind of the people involved in f1 and if it isn't then i imagine it might be stripped back to kind of like a 20 that we had or maybe an 18 somewhere between there will probably be good but i think it's a very good point for max to raise because we often forget kind of getting absorbed in the the teams and the um drivers and we see very much just the friday saturday to sunday we don't understand necessarily or don't see it all the time of all the work that goes on behind the scenes and how hard those people are working and the long hours they are working so yeah they certainly need to be taken into consideration as well and then guys to round off the news um i said i was going to do it this start i i just think this is how you want to go out and kind of lift it up it is great news that the surgery that uh one man Correa, manuel Correa underwent on this foot 
was successful and yeah it went well I think he has another minor operation in two weeks but it was said that he will be out of hospital in six weeks and the recovery will take uh, somewhere within a year period I think it depends obviously with any of these injuries sometimes they heal a bit quicker or sometimes they take longer there might be complications through it but the main thing that one man well career is all right and he is on that road although it be a long road to recovery and it is actually fantastic and he was actually he was able to give a statement so i'm just going to read the statement out for you guys because um yeah it was it was great to hear from him so he said i understand my future regarding the recovery of my legs specifically my right leg is still quite uncertain and that my physical rehab will be extremely long and complicated I am still processing everything that has and is happening, he said, and I want to thank every single person who one way or another has shown me their support. I am humbled by the immense number of caring and affectionate messages I have received. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart and know that your encouragement and positivity have made the difference. And I, this is a real good feel-good story. Obviously, it was horrific what happened at Spa. It was so tragic to lose Antoine Hubert. Um, but we haven't lost Carrere. He is on that road to recovery. It's great to hear, um, hear from him that he's able to speak in public now. It is going to be tough. He's still going to need the support of the F1 community and obviously his family and friends around him. But I wish him all the best for the future and I think I'd speak for everyone when we say that. So yeah, that is fantastic news to round off on. And so guys, yeah, there it is. There is another F1 Weekly News Show. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, don't forget, if you have enjoyed, let us know. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, get involved in the comments on your thoughts on the news what's your thoughts on the i know we're a bit late to the party as it happened late last week of the mclaren mercedes deal that potential lando norris being managed by mercedes um what would your thoughts be on a team entering in 2021 do you think the fia are right to kind of be cautious about entering new teams or would you love to see new teams on the grid and obviously let us know your thoughts on one man career and how good that news is um that the surgery went well uh but yes that means round off guys uf1 fans keep racing